Hello, my name is Bart Brecka. Today I'm going to present a uh, Echo Swingline stapler that was developed by Beyond Design back in 98. They uh, presented it for an IDA award and won a silver on it. Echo Swingline stapler. Design Engine is a school where we teach a wide variety of software packages and uh, this is our blog where we write a wide variety of articles related to engineering, um, motorcycles, automotive auto show. We're about to upload an article today on the 2012 Houseware Show uh, from Chicago. I've already started Pro Engineer, so uh, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and start building this stapler, but I'm going to do this video probably in three segments. One is the development of the skeleton model. My naming convention for a, an external copy geometry would be the zero zero to indicate it's a skeleton part. If you've learned Pro Engineer on your own or learned it years years ago before Wildfire came out, you're probably using the extrude tool without the, the use of the previous sketch geometry. I'm going to go ahead and build build this example not using the sketch geometry to illustrate why one might want to actually insert the sketch first. I'm just going to use my scroll bar ball to zoom in just a bit. I'm in a closer proximity to how big my part's going to be. I'm going to set it to 9 and 5, maybe uh, 3 tall. And I'll extrude this part at 1 inch, my intention being that it's, a, it's going to be mirrored. <clears throat> there's several different ways I'm going to mirror in an example, but there's one that I like to utilize in this example. So again, notice there's no sketch. The sketch is uh, embedded in, in the feature itself. My next feature is going to be a sketch at the bottom of the geometry that's going to sort of dictate the size, the outer boundary of the geometry. And also notice how my uh, Part, I really want to show my geometry sideways like this, but by default it went vertical. First thing I'm going to do is come over here and switch my sketch setup and pick, uh, instead of left or right, I'll pick top or bottom and reorient the model just to take a little better use of my rectangular screen shape. My first uh, effort now might be to draw one concave, one convex, and then one concave geometry. Um, I don't like these uh, bars that point to each other. There's a, a config setting that one might want to look for to, to turn those off. I'm aligning the end points now, breaking a little bit of the uh, <clears throat> ANSI standard modeling methodology. I'm going to go ahead and dimension to the outer boundary of my stapler. My intention being, if I, if I make changes to the model, the width, for example, I want I want the width to 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 change as well. I'm going to go ahead and dimension uh, this geometry to here, and I like to get rid of these radius values, but uh, you don't actually have to, for your example. And uh, just take a, a mental screenshot of how I dimension this. It's all dimensioned to the top of the part, and not to the bottom, not not to the center plane, like ANSI standard might have you do. I like to think that we can. If we know the rules well enough, we can break them. I'm going to use the variable section sweep tool here to traject a surface, not a solid, but a surface sketch. Okay, I know my part's upside down. I like to, I like to go ahead and sketch something, rotate it then in 3D to see what I've done, and you can see that, that I've, 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 I've done correctly. I'm going to go ahead and change the way I want to dimension it. I'm going to, ch I'm going to dimension the, the angle, and I'm going to dimension to the height. That way, if my intention being to make modifications to the height of this geometry, I want my variable section sweep to not fail. Okay, so you can see I've basically extruded or, or swept a surface across there. If you look closely, you can see that the surface doesn't come all the way to the end. I'm going to use an extend to get that to extend completely. And I like to think that my analogy is if I'm trying to cut a cut a block of cheese with a knife, uh, I have to I have to 
if I don't cut all the way down, this doesn't cut all the way over, then I'm going to need to break the cheese and that's where ProEngineer will fail. I'm going to go ahead and use the extend function in the surface geometry. It's, it's extending it by a default sort of value. I can get in there and change it. I just want, to go, I want it to go a little bit above and beyond. In the automobile industry, there's, there's words that describe that methodology, um, overbuilding. I'm going to hit extend and, and do the same thing. Now I can use that surface as a tool now to cut with. So I'm going to left click on the surface, move my mouse a little bit, and left click once more, and I've turned the surface pink where I can actually do a solidify. Now there's three different types of solidifies. I can do a solid solidify and a cut solidify. This one is the, the uh, patch version of the both. I'm going to go ahead and turn it to a cut solidify and then I want to change my arrow. If you click on the arrow, chances are you could choose a different surface. I like to pick up here so I don't grab the wrong thing by accident. Now I've created the, the stapler, the side of my stapler. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the, the front. Now I'm going to go ahead and place an arc on the geometry and if you'll notice I've got my arc center of my arc below the line. My indi indication here is that the product's going to be pulled from the bottom and I want to maintain a sort of plastic part design methodology, although this is die cast. I'll call it a plastic part methodology. In our plastic part design workshops, whether you use Pro Engineer or SolidWorks, we 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 teach a lot of things that 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 will help you from making mistakes. And we're using the software uh, to help us from making those mistakes. And in this case, my workflow here is to set a dimensional schema for the for the uh, pull direction of the geometry. I also like to get rid of the radiuses. You don't have to, but it makes better sense for when we go and start making changes. I don't have to think in radian, radiuses. I can think in terms of X, Y, and Z. Also notice I didn't, uh, at the bottom, I didn't create a sketch, uh, a construction geometry. I'm going to go ahead and left click on that geometry and go to right hold down and pick construction. There we go. Now I need to use a variable section sweep function here to sketch the shape. I'm just going to blindly hit the sketch tool. I can see the crosshairs. That's that way, that's where I know where to, to, to uh, draw my geometry. In this case I went ahead and gave myself the center alignment um, on purpose. I'm going to go ahead and dimension this geometry so that I've got it ready to to complete. I'll check out, of, check out of the sketcher tool and there's my surface geometry. I'm going to go ahead and left click on the surface and go to solidify in a cut direction cutting one way or the other. I'm going to do the same thing to the, to the, to the back of the stapler, the front of the stapler being the shorter side I'm going to do the same thing to the back of the stapler, but instead of clicking that sketch plane, I'm just going to hit use previous. It's just a tad bit faster. Do the same thing over here. I just made sure I got my sketch below the line. I go ahead and uh, draw my, my draft entity. This time I'm going to go ahead and pop it to construction quickly. I'm going to go ahead and align it uh, to the edge of the geometry. Managing parent-child constraints and what you dimension to really sets one up to make a model quite a bit more robust and I think a lot of people will, will, will agree once they take a class like this and really start focusing on what they're dimensioning to. Notice I got rid of the radius. My intention is to make a model that's so ridiculously robust that I can turn it into anything I want. I'm going to go ahead and click on the variable section sweep tool and go control C and then I'm going to come over here and hit control V. This is a workflow that uh, I've developed when creating Caterpillar uh, side geometry for, for large surfaces. Uh, you can't kind of cut and paste like that in other programs. I'm going to go ahead and uh, check out it. Okay, so there's, this, there's the, the front and the back of my stapler. Now I need to work on the, the top portion. Same thing. 
an arc and an arc. I, I broke this one up into two. If you had the stapler in front of you, you might uh, disagree and, and think of it as one, one arc across there. I see it as two. I'm also going to dimension to the top of my product because I want, I want everything dimensioned to the top of the geometry. And as I do so, the radiuses will, will start to go away. Okay, so let's take this and kind of stretch it up and down. I can dimension this geometry, the center of that, and then this radius went away. I'll leave this radius just for the sake of leaving it. Now I can now take a variable section sweep and go control C and then control V on it as well. I'm going to hit undo there just to illustrate another point. If I go control C and pick here and go control V and Let's do that one more time. Control C. I picked the wrong geometry to copy. And Control C and Control V. If it's upside if 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 you click on the arrow, it'll change the concavity of the sketch. Just wanted to point that out in case you were doing it and you noticed it was the wrong side. Now I'm going to hit solidify in a cut direction here. Oops, see I was grabbing the wrong thing. That's why you kind of want to get up here and just it's easier just to grab it. Notice I left I leave everything set to smart. It's much faster and if you just force yourself to deal with this geometry you're going to learn how to build selection sets much faster. Now I've created kind of the first portion of my stapler. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and kind of introduce a, a new word uh, delineation geometry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch geometry that's going to segregate the upper portion of my part to the lower portion. And in the uh, in the stapler itself, it's it's it looks a little bit like this. And it's a, it can be a little unwieldy to, to stretch this geometry around, but uh, I'm going to try to dimension it so it's a little easier. Now here's where I would like to dimension to the upper portion of my stapler. I, I'm just going to leave the dimensions the way they are, but notice because I didn't create a sketch up here, I can't unhide the sketch and utilize it to dimension to. Come back and illustrate that point uh, later. I'm going to take the shade off and go ahead and define where the stapler strikes the page. I'm going to go ahead and sketch this one downward and this one upward. And if you'll notice how Pro Engineer just kind of blindly dimensions my geometry, I've been talking to PTC about having Pro Engineer remember how I like to dimension geometry. My trick is to lie and say SolidWorks does it, then they'll let me get that feature in. But uh, SolidWorks doesn't even automatically dimension anything, so I have to make up a different fib to, to obtain that workflow. I'm going to go ahead and dimension this, and then dimension this. Instead of this dimension that's out of scope, I want to be able to see the dimension, so I need to kind of think about how to, get, how to obtain that shape. If it's out of scope of my visual comprehension, I don't see it and it doesn't make sense for me when it starts to manipulate when I start to manipulate the geometry. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line across the bottom. Let's set that to uh, 0.15 and so what I've done is I've basically defined the delineation between the upper housing, the lower housing, and the rubber portion of the stapler itself. I'm going to go ahead and go into insert mode before these three features exist. And then instead of mirroring a whole, I'm going to shift select all this geometry and mirror it. I don't usually mirror this way because I don't like to include, see how it's got a minus sign in front of the mirror right here, my mouse is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that mirror and I'm going to pick at the uh, pick on the, on the uh, actual part itself and then hit mirror. A little bit different. There's some pros and cons of each methodology here. This 
the, the negative for this one is that the data planes get mirrored. See how it says top underscore one here? So what I'm going to do is just get into my layers and create a layer called mirror. In Pro Engineer, when you, when you layer something off, a layer a feature off, I'm going to go ahead and layer properties and in mid stride here come back over and pick the mirror feature itself and hit OK and then the top underscore one goes away. And SOLIDWORKS doesn't even have layers. I don't know how they get away with that. All right, so there's my product. Let's resume these features. They're now after the datum. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit extrude on the, the, the one feature here. Hit extrude on the one sketch. And I'm going to right click on that dot and say symmetric. Most people just come up here and do it, but it's a little faster if you can grab it at the dot. And I'm going to set it too wide because my product's set to one. Now I'm going to hit Control C on that feature and come down in here and just drop it here. Control V, middle click, and again, Control V, middle click. So it workflows quite a bit faster to do it this way. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save this model, stop my video, and then I'm going to create another video showing top-down design in the very next segment. Thanks for watching so far and uh, please consider coming to Design Engine in the future.